It is uh, Sunday, the 8th of January, 2017. I'm in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, engaged in my uh, alternative spiritual practice of protesting against Unitarian Universalist injustices, abuses, and hypocrisy. And uh, I was in the middle of a monologue, and the camera died, I think because the cold weather got to the battery. I mean, it was showing 50% power the last time I looked at it. Um, but uh, I think the cold weather got the better of it and it died and so the camera stopped recording. I don't know exactly when it stopped recording because when I'm doing my monologue, when I'm walking, I'm not looking at the screen and the camera. It's just hanging from my neck. Um, so I don't know where the monologue got cut off. And there was a little incident that happened that I was talking about. Um, that almost certainly was not recorded, unfortunately. I'm hoping it was. Hoping it got, at least the incident was recorded. Um, but what we'll do is we will, at minimum, talk about the incident. Um, and then I'll decide, you know, how much of the monologue I want to sort of backtrack and reconstitute. Um, but getting to the incident, uh, uh, a car whose driver had dropped someone off at the Unitarian Church of Montreal as they were leaving, just coming down uh, Bulmer Street there, so coming down that side street, that's Bulmer. Um, the driver looks at me and starts twirling his finger around his ear, indicating, you know, that I am crazy, insane, Looney Tunes. You know, that's essentially what twirling the finger around the head means. Um, and this, you know, this is kind of ironic because my protest began in part as a result of Reverend Ray Drennan and some other leading members of the Unitarian Church of Montreal claiming, you know, that I was seriously mentally ill, specifically psychotic, um, which I am most certainly not, um, as a result of Reverend Ray Drennan's uh, assertion that uh, a revelatory religious experience that I had back in the early 1990s was a psychotic experience, and that according to him, I needed psychiatric treatment. Um, um, I actually went to a psychiatrist back in the day and was thoroughly examined twice and spread uh, about a month and a half to two months apart. I think my first meeting was in uh, November of, I think, uh, 1995, good day sir, and uh, and the second one was in February, um, and uh, yeah, so I guess it was yeah, November 1995 and February 1996, um, so, so uh, <coughs> what I was going to say is, uh, that, uh, you know, as a result of being accused of being psychotic by Reverend Ray Drennan, I went and saw a qualified and well-respected psychiatrist um, and had myself assessed. Um, and as a, you know, after two meetings, bonjour. So, uh, so, uh, I had two meetings with him, one in November of 1995, the other in February of 1996, so spread, you know, a couple of months apart, um, even close to three months apart, uh, and, uh, after those two quite thorough psychiatric assessments, he wrote a doctor's note to Reverend Ray Drennan 
informing him that he could find no traces of psychosis in me. That's his exact words. It's hard to believe, but it's true, sir. <laughs> you can just uh, Google the, the appropriate keywords. So this guy who, you know, dropped a long-time member of the Unitarian Church of Montreal off uh, was looking at my picket signs. Let's go see what they say. We'll just be slightly distracted here. Um, we'll get back to that stuff in a second. But uh, we'll just see what he was looking at. You know, I like to sort of go with the flow. Unitarian Universalist Perversion of Justice sucks you, Astro C. Well, I think we've already covered that. Uh, Church of the Immaturnishing Ministers. We've done quite a good job of covering that, but I'm sure some of that monologue, I think, got cut off. We'll get back to it. Uh, so getting back to me being crazy, uh, and even more specifically, psychotic. Um, you know, as a result of essentially being accused of being psychotic by Reverend Ray Drennan, I was assessed by a psychiatrist and after two quite thorough psychiatric examinations, he determined that there wasn't the slightest trace of psychosis in me. Uh, in fact, in the first meeting, within minutes, you know, he said, you're obviously sane. Um, and he later followed that up by saying, you're perfectly sane. Now, I wouldn't myself say that I'm perfectly sane. I don't think anyone's perfectly sane, really. Everyone's got some, you know, psychiatric issues. You can't really live in this world without, at minimum, having some, how should we put it, uh, emotional injury. I won't say mental illness, but I will say emotional injury. I, I don't think there's anyone on this planet that hasn't suffered some kind of emotional injury, which I do not consider the actual uh, mental illness per se. I mean, some emotional uh, psychological injury can become a mental illness. I think PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, is a pretty good example of that. Uh, but getting back to things, Getting back to the specifics, you know, I was accused of being psychotic by Reverend Ray Drennan, specifically. You know, he angrily insisted that a religious experience that I was trying to explain to him was your psychotic experience, and he followed that up by insisting that I needed, in his words, professional help. Well, I didn't think I was psychotic. I didn't think I was seriously mentally ill. And uh, I decided, well, probably the best thing to do is to go see a psychiatrist and get assessed and, uh, and then I'll be able to provide uh, Reverend Ray Drennan with the uh, letter from a psychiatrist uh, testing to the fact that I'm not psychotic and then I can get this hypocritical asshole to apologize. Uh, but of course, uh, Reverend Ray Drennan being who he is, refused to apologize after being given a note. It was, it was a note. It wasn't like a full-on letter. It was basically just said, you know, I've seen uh, Mr. Edgar and I've assessed him and uh, could find no traces of psychosis in him. That's an exact quote to the best of my memory. No traces of psychosis, so like not even the slightest. Good morning. It's always a good morning when I'm accused of blasphemy by Unitarians. Um, so, uh, <laughs> there's a Unitarian being nice. Yeah. Unfortunately, being nice doesn't resolve the issues that I'm protesting against. Um, so, uh, so anyway, you know, basically this Getting back to what started this monologue was, you know, this driver in this car is like twirling his finger around his ear, indicating that I'm crazy, I'm insane, 
and I'm Looney Tunes kind of thing. Um, well, gee, you know, if you read the picket signs, everything on them is supported by evidence. Um, everything I'm saying is very truthful, and there's lots and lots of documentary evidence uh, supporting what I'm saying, and then there's plenty of other less solid circumstantial evidence and so on also supporting what I'm saying. Um, so there's nothing remotely insane about what's on my picket signs. Um, Unitarian Universalist perversion of justice sucks, you asked her to. I don't normally use the word sucks, but I'm using it because some Unitarian Universalists use the word towards me. So I said, I'm fine. If Unitarian Universalists can say Rob and Edgar sucks, well, I can say Unitarian Universalist perversion of justice sucks. Um, Church of the Image Tarnishing Ministers, well, as if uh, no ministers of the Unitarian Universalist Church, to say nothing of any other church, uh, have tarnished the image of the church. Um, I mean, I could say that even without reference to my own situation. Unsafe sect, well, unfortunately, Unitarian Universalism is no more safe than various other religious communities. Um, it's got its own clergy sexual abuse problems, and of course it has other unsafe aspects that uh, have little or nothing to do with sexual abuse, but have plenty to do with other forms of abuse, including psychological and emotional abuse, and so on. Um, anyhow, getting back to me allegedly being insane, um, in fact, if you look at some of the things that uh, Unitarian Universalists have done, that I'm protesting against, against, some of those can actually be reasonably described as insane in the broad sense of the word, crazy in the broad sense of the word, and quite frankly, batshit crazy in the broad sense of that. Uh, you know, not mentally ill, but insane in the sense of just very, very foolish actions. Uh, um, and one of those things that can be described as insane and even batshit crazy is the Unitarian Universalist Association's false blasphemous libel accusation against me. So, uh, it shouldn't uh, be necessary for me to go into detail about how it is bat shit crazy for Unitarian Universalists to uh, hire Steichman Elliott Barristers and Solicitors Litigation Lawyer Mate to Mark Andre Coulomb to falsely accuse me of the archaic criminal act of blasphemous libel in Bill Cosby style legal bullying that seeks to conceal from the public the fact that certain Unitarian Universalist ministers are guilty of such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape. Um, you know, it is crazy on so many levels. Uh, but one of the ways it's crazy is that uh, Unitarians and Universalists, you know, well before they merged in 1961, had a centuries-old tradition of opposing blasphemy laws because they were very often accused of blasphemy. They were very often persecuted and prosecuted and jailed and even executed for blasphemy because of their theologies which were heretical in terms of Trinitarian Christianity. Unitarians denied the doctrine of the Trinity. Universalists proclaimed universal salvation. Both of these theological positions were considered blasphemous by Trinitarian 
Christians and, and so Unitarians and Universalists over, you know, centuries were prosecuted and, and jailed and even executed for blasphemy. Um, so, so Unitarian Universalism had this centuries-old proud tradition of opposing blasphemy laws. And then in the 21st century, UUA President Reverend Dr. Peter Morales, no doubt with the participation and I suspect the inspiration of UUA Executive Vice President Kathleen K. Montgomery, think it would be a really good idea to accuse. Good morning, sir. Happy New Year. Yeah, nice cold day. Yeah, snow showing up in the Laurentians yesterday. Right, right, it was right. It's gorgeous. What, yeah. a, what a relief to get out of the city. Yeah. To, I, I kind of like the city, but uh, but yeah, it'd be nice to get out there. When it gets the fresh covering and the snow gets all freshened up and white, it can be. Yeah, better. I bet it's right and nice right now. Yeah. Two feet, two feet of powdery yeah. snow up. North. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Yeah, I should reinvest in cross-country skis. <laughs> I never did snowshoeing. It was uh, yeah, too clunky it's, for me. <laughs> well, it's basically hiking in the winter, that's all it is. Right, but those snowshoes, you know, you sort of have to have a certain stance. and It gets into yeah. your motor memory and yeah, I'm I sure, yeah. the whole day in a yeah. mental zone, yeah. admiring the trees yeah. or thinking about life. Yeah, it's nice when the sun's out. Yeah, thinking about the infinite. Oh, exactly, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> never mind churches, when yeah, you think yeah. about the infinite, right? <laughs> well, I think about the infinite quite a bit and uh, Happy New Year! Okay. Yeah. So, uh, this gentleman is, you know, a member of the public. He's seen me protesting for years, so, and he knows I'm recording. He's he he's uh, he understands that the camera's running. Um, that issue's been discussed with him in the past. So he doesn't mind coming up and having a nice little conversation with me that he knows will end up on YouTube. Um, but anyway, getting back to things. Um, you know, Unitarian Universalists 